Uh, that's the old Hadley garage. Okay. The Nidvalo's garage. Yeah. Um, we had we were in previously about a month and a half ago. Um, and they asked us about parking and a few other things, and we've done a lot of work in regards to that. And we found that we can put 72 spaces on 97 Russell Street um, to um, to do what we need to do over there, and also alleviate the congestion that you guys were concerned about in regards to. 99 Russell Street, which is Asimov Cafe. Um, and we would like um, some direction in regards to um, proceeding with our plan for the property. What's your plan for the property? Um, we would like to rent out 2,200 square feet of the property um, to a tenant that has not been identified yet. And then uh, Esalon is going to um, use the rest of it for a state approved commercial kitchen and also for uh, storing and processing our coffee. Will you be roasting your coffee there or stuff like that? We process? have no intention of roasting our coffee there. They're just going to store your coffee? Yep, store, package, um, box, and ship our coffee out of there. Okay, that's, yep. that's different than roasting it. I had a concern about roasting it because of the odors. Oh, right. Okay. Where, where do you roast? Uh, we roast at the cafe. And you are the owner of that? I am the owner of Vessel of the Cafe. Now, are, are you roasting for wholesale or just for yourself? Uh, we both are done there. Okay. That is an industrial use. Mm -hmm. And you're in a business zone. Mm -hmm. You are not in compliance with your business zone. If you are roasting coffee for commercial wholesale distribution. Okay. It's not a permitted use. Okay. Um, Biggest concern about that is the odors. Okay. Um, you know, it's one thing. How often do you roast? Let me ask you that question. We roast anywhere from two to three days a week, and uh, we've been doing that for maybe twelve years in June, and I've never filled with a complaint. On our smell. Yeah, I, I smell more garlic coming out of Alina's. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, we're not talking about Alina. Yeah. It's a little bit different if it's a part time roasting versus a full time roasting because right. when I know I drive by, I'll give you use rails. Mm -hmm. they, they don't roast that often either, but when they do roast, if the, air, if the wind is right, you can smell it. Right. And they're in an industrial zone, there's no houses around them, it's different. Mm -hmm. You have houses within a stone store, a lot of them. Yep. And I live in one of them. What's that? I, I live in one of them. And but that that's just a concern that you know if you're if you start roasting a lot and the odors get out of hand, you will be shut down. You'll be non compliance. Okay, just yep. as a warning. Yeah, we have this uh, special burner that actually helps with the smell. Okay. It's a nice addition to it. Okay. Well, I've never smelled this, so that's to your credit, that's good because I have smelled it rails and I haven't smelled it. But of course, I will buy um, that for part of the street. That obviously, you, see this, you think this is going to solve the problem with parking on the town common? Eh? Um, we feel that uh, with the um, with the plans that we have set, we'll be able to uh, have an additional 25 to 35 spots that we can utilize for Esalon. One of the requirements, you need site plan approval. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of the requirements of site plan approval is you will not be allowed to park on a common anymore mm -hmm. or on a site or on what you're not allowed to park on West Street, period, because you're not supposed to be parking there now. And you are the person that can control that. You have the most control over anybody to do that. And what you're doing here, I'm just giving you a warning that that's going to be part of the approvals when, when if this comes about. Okay, that you will need to stop 100% of the parking on my street. Not allowed. 
Well, I certainly will not vote for that for him if he continues. If he takes on that property, and if he continues putting cars off site, then I vote no on that. I'll tell you right now. Back to the question at hand, though, it appears from your question that you do not have sufficient parking where the garage is, or do you? We, we are approximating the, the bylaw of the two for one. Uh, what is coming into play is the, in the actual usage, not conflicting with the bylaw, but the usage, the staffing and so forth, the, the parking demand on that property for his operation will be significantly less than the two for one ratio generates. So that surplus parking would be conveyed to mitigate the concerns of the, the crowding or the, the perceived inadequate parking at the cafe. Not perceived, it is. All right. <laughs> I mean, you, would, you wouldn't be parking on West Street if you had adequate parking. Okay. But I guess the way that we're putting this together is are we to submit the documentation or by letter state because he doesn't own the parcel the cafe is on he's the business operator there as tenant correct mm -hmm. so should we be crafting the documents for the board to approve with in a sense a cross easement or or how do we what, what are we structuring to say that what you, 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 need, to, you need to look at what you have and have the audit Yep. You need to provide two for one parking for them. Where, first of all, right. whatever they're going to do there, the and green space and the rest of the stuff. Yep. In addition to that, because it's part essentially of the Esalon business, mm -hmm. whether or not you own it or not, it, we don't care if you own a parking, we don't care if the property's owned, leased, or right. whatever. We care about providing and uh, 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 obeying the zoning bylaw. Right. Okay. So, Excess and everything else, whatever he's got, whatever this gentleman has to do to alleviate the parking on West Street, with to have the auto parking excess or otherwise, you know. Okay, I'm, I'm sort of following. I'm just I don't mean to sort of act really stupid on this, but we would be producing on the boundaries of the parcel that he's wanting to acquire we would be showing that we're meeting the bylaw for the two for one parking regulations for the square foot, regardless of what goes in there. I understand. We would go further to describe the operations that are the Esalon coffee uh, business and the subtenant and the parking demands generated by those uses to indicate a surplus. Do we commit that surplus to the cafe, which is another parcel? I mean, I, that's where shared, shared parking is permitted between businesses and buildings like that. Okay. Okay. Now he doesn't meet two for one parking. He meets two for one parking on Esalon if he just had the building. But when the outside seating area was put in, it threw everything. It, it basically doubled the size of the seating area almost. I'm guessing. Okay. okay, and therefore, or, or, or whatever, it increased the seating area, yeah, however, yeah. however much it would increase it by. And then there wasn't enough parking on the site. And, okay, it was a loophole in a bylaw at the time that has since been addressed. So, to answer the question yeah. is, okay, you need, based on your new tenants, you figure you need this much parking, and you don't need the two for one. So of that, how much can you commit to the Esalon Cafe? What if they change tenants? That's, I'm gonna to get to that, okay. That, this is what you have, that, that will meet today's parking, but down the road, if you right. change tenants, like what John just said, right. then you may not have enough. Right. So, I don't know how to answer your question. All I'm saying is, to get approval for the Hadley Auto, you will eliminate the parking on West Street. I'm going to leave it up to you and your businessman to figure out 
how you do that. We're not going to. We don't. We don't design for you. Well, I just didn't know how. I mean, it's it's because Echelon Cafe is on the adjoining parcel, and this is a adjunct operation that is fully owned by. So Echelon. I think with the owner of the property and the owner of the business being one of the same, I think we can address. I don't think you need to do reciprocal easements or anything because because okay. he, he doesn't own, really own the other property. Right. That's, that's why I, I didn't know what so the legal. I think we may be able are. to word something in the in the ultimate decision. Okay. That will address. We would we would welcome that assistance yeah. because yeah. we yeah. were. Yeah. A lot of depends what kind of tenant you put in there. Yep. Yeah. So that, let's just for instance say you put a restaurant in there. Yes. Oh, I, I understand. I'm just using that as an example. And the restaurant requires typically this much parking. We may have to limit you to the kind of reciprocal, not the, not the reciprocal, the kind of business turnover to be similar to what you're renting to. Absolutely. So that let's say you put, maybe restaurants are high, is a high use one. That's not a good. One. Let's say you put a uh, a hobby shop in there, like a a hobby shop, whatever it may be, sure. and they get you know five customers an hour. Whereas a restaurant gets 20 customers an hour. So we would say, okay, you could not, under their hour approval, this building can never go to this other type of a high uh, volume use. Right, the okay. high traffic. Yeah. So if they change tenants and they got a high call for parking, and they don't have enough part, are we going to have a spillover somewhere else? Well, what I'm saying is, I think we can put a condition in that if they change tenants, they have to come back. We have to approve individual tenants. Yeah. And if he doesn't get the cars off of West Street, this, this approval is null and void? Unfortunately not. Well, what are, we, are we going to put something in writing? Is we we can design? put something in writing, but we don't have that kind of enforcement authority. If I mean, we're, we're <coughs> making as a business, he would be making every effort to mitigate any of the parking violations that... He did a poor job. So, well, we don't well, want to go on history. Yeah, he hasn't done it. Yeah. Yeah. For whatever <coughs> reason, the select, the select board is declined to put up no parking signs there. Right. So, yeah. I mean, if he makes every effort and, and is indicated on plan that this is how he's addressing it, that's about what he can do, except to have a person run down the side of West Street waving people off the shoulder. We yeah. intend to put up all the appropriate signs to direct people over mm -hmm. in that area, whatever it takes. Do you want to repair the damage cost of the common along that little strip there? Um, we'll, we'll we're always it. willing to help the town in any way possible, as we always have. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll cross that with one of those comes. Yeah. But it was more of just how do we structure the drawings, and you've yeah. given us some direction to, right. <coughs> to well, sh it show us what, on, on, based on your proposed tenants, what do you really need? Yeah. Where will the excess be to make sure we'll make sure that's excess is enough to walk? Because we're not going to walk the, far. To be right. far extreme. Yeah. yeah. No, we're we're I mean, trying to the same right. distance that they're traveling now or less. Yeah. Because I saw many are digging inside the garage this last week. They were doing some serious. Yeah, yeah, but they continue to dig. Yep, <laughs> doing some work. Okay. But that, that was really the question on how we can structure that and what, if there were, and, and you addressed it in some fashion, the significance of the roasting or operations that would be associated with the handling of the coffee. Okay. Um, and, and I think that we're, we're glad that he's successful. That's very good. We're not, we're, not trying to, we're not trying to shoot them down and not be successful, but we also have to address what. Right, because it is more the, the downside of the success. The business no, operation. You can't put an airport in activity in a little ball field either. Yeah. So, all right, good. Okay. I don't really good. I appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Reedy and Mr. Roberts. Perfect. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, we've got a submission for you. We've got the copies here. This is a color 
full set. If you want to open it, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I've got the application, I've got labor letter, copies, certified abutters list. So this is 303 Russell Street, uh, Keats and Lumber property. Uh, if you've been by it recently, you'll see that there is some work going on on the site. There's an existing order of conditions uh, that uh, Barry is. So what he's doing, he's taken down. You'll see that there are, I think this is the only structure left right now. All of these are gone. He's pulling out all the wood chips. He's cleaning up the site, um, filling it uh, with some of his fill from uh, over East Street Commons and grading it. So this is the first step of the redevelopment, obviously taking it down and then coming before you um, for what will ultimately be two structures on the site, a 15,763 square foot um, retail store. It's a uh, proposed, that'll be the hardware frame. Yep. That'll be the Rio's. That'll be the Rio's. The Rio's relocated. That's going to be the other one. Correct. That's mm -hmm. it. And what the is, other one. What is this happening to this? This, so this, um, this is, separate parcel. this is a totally separate parcel. This has been uh, in its existence since probably the 40s. This, um, there's some discussions that this will go over to Steve Lewis and maybe help their access um, off the Route 9 a little bit. But that's a totally separate from what we're looking at here. So here you've got the site plan of what's um, going to be or what is being proposed. So where is all the water going to go? Well, that's <coughs> Conservation Commission. You just, well, you, I want to ask you, this way. So it's uh, maybe if you flip, so we have some, so here's a great one, drainage plan. Well, we've, we've had our engineer take a look and they talked to Mark Stinson from over at DEP, um, who because of, they, they did test pits on the site. These are all locations of the test pits. And as you can imagine, it came back pretty heavy clay. So there's not going to be any infiltration there. Everything's just going to be sheet flow and so it's going to there's a little ridge line here uh it comes around this way and it comes around this way works its way through this which will probably ultimately be a grassy area instead of a wetland that's part of the conservation process and we'll travel in this direction and then go through um the appropriate media there i think there's, there's a brook there ultimately down here yeah there's a brook and so if Farther. you flip no. You can go even further, not to skip too far ahead, but you can see what the, the vegetation is going to look like. Yeah, so you'll see what it, and there'll be um, re there'll be revegetation right here, a wetland area put right here. There will be some grass, and then also pea stones that the engineer has called out. That work is. Um, yeah, exactly, like an, an active filter before it gets into that stream. And then from here it just goes under, my, under, my, under, under the bike path. Under the bike path into the uh, outdoor There's port. a box called right yeah. there. Okay. What is that actually called, um, cross mill, mill valley road? Are you find a pump station? Is that where that goes that way? When it crosses this, the pump stations here. Over here. Yeah, they're down here. There's several culverts across Brute, uh, Goulet's Field or yeah. I, Ideal, Ideal is that Storage. Is behind the storage, Ideal Storage? No, they're further down. They're further down. They're further down. Right? Further down. Yeah. So the pump station is. It's, it's at the end of the flow. Well, there's you got you got the uh, uh, fine fine Kevin's is a little. Uh, there's a there's a culvert right in front of fine Kevin's. Yeah, right? yeah, and then there's that that one by fine Kevin's, isn't that the one that by Hadley Gardens that goes in by Hadley Gardens there? Yours is further down a right. bit, so you're actually either through Ideal Storage or just at the other right at the back side of Ideal Storage okay. where this might go through. Okay. So that's Steve Lewis there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's just the so side of Steve Lewis. Lewis. That's Keats up. Okay. So the deal is up there. So that, there's, a, there's a culvert right there and there's another one there. And I think there's another one over there. Yeah, you can see them. Yeah. You know, that, uh, what, in Keats, that was like a bog all the time. Yeah, I don't know where the heck are you going to uh, put all that pavement in those buildings. I don't know where the hell all that water is. 
I can't believe it's going to dispense somewhere away. Because I know Keats's, Keats's, that place was just a bog. We get stuff out there all the time. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. we found five, almost five feet of wood chips there. I know, but where's the, where's the hell's the water going to go? All those wood chips, they rot right anyway, so that's just a waste of time. It looks like there's a pretty heavy duty culvert going across Goulet. So there's probably this one right here. I think it's it's actually it looks for like it's more over here, more behind Steve Lewis. Okay, this way. Yeah. Steve Lewis is that way to east of this. This is Steve Lewis right here. Right. Yeah, yeah so that's Oh, that's no, maybe that is it. Yeah, I think that, okay, is, the, yeah. that is the heavy I'm sorry, that was off by, by a lot. Uh, that is Kitsa. Right. And that culvert comes right out into the ditch. Yeah. It's under the rail trail. Under the, the rail, rail, rail trail. trail. It's a right about here someplace. It goes under all the way across the lanes into the Fort River. Yeah. And is there any state drainage tied into this? I think there is, dumping into this. And this takes the basement up above here and goes into that. There's, well, a, there's a whole bunch of crossings there. I don't know which one goes where. I, 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 well, this is the golf course is right across yeah. here. All that basin is, all goes back into this. Well, there's another one back at Rockies. Rockies is this one. This one. Right. Yeah, right. 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 That's the one between this, the there, there's a collection area behind Rockton mm -hmm. that's good that got wet. This is a not a new situation to the planning board. Many, many years people are always concerned about drainage. Of course. And we used to have to make the decision on ourselves by ourselves. However, mm -hmm. we only have one engineer on board. The rest of us are neophytes when it comes to knowing where drainage goes and, 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 and what they so what we have, so what we have done. He's an engineer on a train. So what we have done is hire a peer review engineer. <laughs> and the peer review engineer acts as our as our guide. So if the engineers can agree, then you can agree. Yes. And we've, uh, we've well, you're, you're aware of the process, design. but yeah, yeah really. Reach out to you can work here. I think I think we've brushed for yeah, we're doing this The tenants not identified yet for this, right? Well, it's it going to be hard. It's going to be Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, 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 yes. I mean, I, yes. Most people know what it is. Yes. I don't want to public make it public. Yeah, you can. It's it's fine. All this is blacked up. Yes. I think you're going to have a a problem right here. I really don't. Well, the engineers are going to review your power time. So, this is what, what kind of a storm this place has been designed for? Uh, there's no basin. It's just sheet flow. Just sheet flow. Just sheet flow. Yeah, in talking with DEP, that's what they had suggested based on what's on site right now. They said don't do any point source discharges and let it sheet flow and. No, you are on the clay that basin. That whole thing's clay basin in there. I, I know, but but there's no. This is not a collection. No, that's a replication area, wetland replication area. Okay. I mean, it's going to function as not, not like a collection detention basin, but it's going to function as a wetland, and this will also in here collect. How deep are these things going to be? Is there any elevations in there? Um, it just. I mean, you're not going to, it's well, not a, it, but it's not a basin. Yeah, so up here, this is 141. It just in grass. It, 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 it slopes to about six feet down. Yep. That's pretty good. And it'll get to here, and then, yeah, it's probably another six feet down to there, and it'll travel over well, into the stream. You know, you're going to look at upstream and downstream flooding here, because if they jack everything up here in this thing, it, what's going to happen here? <clears throat> I just I just know that land there because I've been there. How many times there's this much water in in this area of Kitsis? Of course, they're re, re, but I mean they're re, uh, landscaping the whole thing. But I mean, look at the blacked up and the roofs from there. Well, they're not. That's all sheer runoff. That I think. Well, it. even before it wasn't nothing was infiltrating before. Right. And if you look at the degraded area, that's why it was there. just a muckle. There. Yeah, it was a big, it was a big, big bud wall. That's, that's probably the true. Yes. 
But if it can't go anywhere, what does it improve? Well, it's going to run off and that's going to stand way off. Way off. That's what I want to know. Well, it was properly landscaped. Mm -hmm. Well, are they going to be able to fly with a shot? Yes, yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. This is flow off. And so it's for um, commercial site plan approval, uh, business use in the aquifer. You can put something down. You know what I'm saying? Here you go, go Outline what we're applying for, and then two somewhat different ones the, the lot width. So. You'll see right here, we've got 197 feet uh, of frontage. We got a finding from the Zoning Board of Appeals to allow us to actually redevelop the site, but you have a, two provisions in your bylaw. One says your lot width has to be 250 feet in this industrial district, or the board can waive if it's no less than 75%, so we're asking for that waiver. And then also, you have a provision that says we have to access over uh, the minimum frontage, and we just don't have that minimum frontage, so we're also asking for I don't have no problem with none of this thing with the drainage. You okay. know, we'll make sure it's a business zone. Uh, it's Industrial no zone, too, which is so we can put the coffee roasting, craft shop. Uh, uh, really? Yeah, just yeah. We'll check into it, for sure. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Some elevations as well. Just the drainage. And then we've got application is right in there. Does anybody have any easements through here? The state or anybody for drainage or anything? Yes, if you look at this, should be an alpha plan. So there's a utility island easement, sewer line easement, there's a taking which won't affect it, and then the drainage easement. I think this one goes back here. You'll see that Steve Lewis's drain line comes a little onto the property. That's the drain up with that, that. that drain, yeah, from here. To here okay. and then across that property back there. Uh, and this is all open brook here, too? Yeah. 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 Right up to the culvert? Yeah. 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 And there's, it seems like there's two pipes coming under the there's road. Twin culverts up there. Yeah. Right. It looks like only one's flowing, I think, is from what we saw. So I don't know if one's all running. Backed up or something like that. Yeah. One's running and flowing. Um, traffic, do you need a trip? Generation statement or anything like that. We asked for a waiver, yeah. but you're going to want one. Well, uh, I'm not, not not a study, but at least the generation. Just the trip generation. Kind of like you know, you're sure. going to be open from them. Assuming like A through no. tenant lines, there's kind of a hour by hour. Yes. Okay. Sure, they have that. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> that. yeah. Every time I go to those things, there always there's, there's a lot of people in that place. I'm afraid. Go to West Springfield and yep. Springfield. Yep. That would be right here. Oh, you need a lot with special. Do we need to give them that? Because the ZBA has already given them a finding that it's okay. I've done it out of an abundance of caution. So whatever. No, no, I understand. I, and I just, yeah, I'm just double know. checking because a lot with special with ZBA has given them a finding that said they're okay. I, I don't think they need that. I think that's. Probably enough, but right. you know we can. Uh, the incremental cost. Uh, I don't think we have to charge, but we might as well just put oh, it we'll in. Yes, I mean we post it. Yes, I mean, it. And vehicular access permit. So that's over because we only have 197 feet of frontage, and your bylaw says you have to access over the minimum frontage. Minimum in the industrial oh, district okay. is 250. So to cover the bases, you probably want to we'll yeah. advertise for that <laughs> simply because you think you might need it. Okay. Thank you. Do it if you don't even need it. Keep doing it. <laughs> well, to get something right here. Well, I mean, if it's probably worth covering the bases. Yeah. 
Who's your engineer? Uh, it's a gentleman, Phil Henry, out of uh, Civil Design Group um, in North Andover. And we have our landscape architect, Andy Bone, out of Place Alliance in Amherst, who used to be with Moon and Environmental, and then we've got Mickey Marcus and his group doing the wetland stuff. So, and like I said, we've already reached out to Mark Darnold and Peter Wells over at Berkshire. For peer review? For peer review, yeah. Okay. You get more than one application on that? Uh, yes, I've got... I just need one. Need so one I can, more? I know it's a post. Okay. I can give you this whole packet if you want, and then you can... Okay, write where all, you right. all right. I've got your two... Okay, okay. so this, this you go with the town clerk with one set of the drawings. Okay. Do you have an extra set? Those are the only two sets I have? Of the drawings. No, of the oh, drawings. drawings? Oh, yeah. Okay. How many do you want? We need seven. Okay. I do have an extra set there. Okay, so that. Let me take one of these. I'll give you the color and then I'll. Right. There, that one will go to Town Clerk. Oh, let, let me see the application. Town Clerk? Yep. Let me see the application. Give me who's going to be. You want to keep this bench clean. There you go. That would be the best part of the approval. What did you say, Bill? Yeah. On April 17th? Yeah. Did you say the Conservation Commission has issued their order of conditions? They have issued a order of conditions yeah. that allows Barry to do the work that he's doing currently, taking down the buildings, okay. scraping the site, etc. We will have to go through this process formally with them. They're meeting in there tonight. I saw they already spoke to Janice. Yeah. Okay. When are they going to come back to the Perfect. This is the one I took to the town clerk? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got building elevations here in 11 by okay. 17, the Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight floor plan, the Rails building, and the proposed Rails floor plan. Okay. And we'll those a few as well. I can get this to electronically as well if that's an easier yeah, way to do it. Yeah, why didn't we get you, we got a proof of case of any change or okay. anything you made so that instead of Bill having a bunch of problems, <laughs> I can wait until we get, we get out okay. on a proof set. And this yeah. may change based upon con comps, so we're going to try to get to them first. Actually, why don't you, yeah, just send me one because I sometimes get questions from people yeah. about whether. Do that. Yeah. I think it's easier from what I've seen in other towns. If you have one and then you can either fire it off to yeah. the town departments, they can zoom in and things are a lot easier. We have a lot of people who like to sit down with a paper plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Mr. Larry. Hello. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? Good. Harbor Freight? Yeah. All right. Have a chair? I'm seeing my hands off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all, all we've got is, uh, I'm not even sure he's going to be back in a second. Like, like, you know, it'll be a total bit of first to do or something. Harbor Freight. You'll find that this is the right thing to wear in the summer, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think you have to dress cold, like, warmer in the summer. I wasn't Very expecting cool. this tonight. Well, you're the lady. You're taking, you are. This is Ashley Eaton. Yeah. She's a colleague right. of mine at BBPC. She's been there for, what, a year and a half, two years? Two years now. Two okay. years. Okay. She is a rich case. You can't read the name, wait. Right. Joseph Rodnick. How do you do? Bill Dwyer's clerk. Yes. Your Max Zelowski chairman. John Michkowski. Mm -hmm. And Mike Sarzinski. The legendary job. Welcome. Thank you. It is the legendary job. No, it is. Both. Oh, no, uh, oh, how about Notorious? The Phantom. It was for his time. Ashley is our housing expert. Okay. So once I get through my little spiel, we'll talk to her about inclusionary zoning and trust and things like that. Great. 
So I did email you. That's very good. Thank today. you. I was looking for that. Is that was that in? Can you email it to me? Yep. In Word format or Excel, whatever it is. Word. Yeah, Word. I sent it to you as a PDF, right? You sent me a PDF. Okay. okay. If you get me in Word, so like I can edit it down the road and say this has been done. Yes. And stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Here's hard copy. Is this the same thing on the computer? Yes. Oh, God. I hate to have you waste your color ink on it. Exactly. You're going to pay for it one way or another. <laughs> well, I told you I was bringing I told you I was bringing I was going to print them off and then I see a little note in the bottom or green copy. Exactly. Oh, good. So here are some individual sheets if you want to stick them in the other departments or the other mm -hmm. board's uh, okay. mail slots. Uh, that, that will work out. You want me to tell you where you can stick it? No, I'm just telling you the question. <laughs> John is very feisty. <laughs> John will say nothing behind your back. He won't say to your face. That's a fact. You want to bet? At the next meeting, I'll be bringing Susan Westa, who is Susan will be the person who's replacing me. Susan's okay. the new one. Susan is the, the newest <laughs> one. And uh, I was talking with Susan today and explained to her that this is probably going to be her roadmap uh, for the next few years in terms of the tasks that she's going to be undertaking. Uh, working with you because they're implementing many of the uh, recommendations in here. So it's all broken down by department or by board so you can just distribute it and uh, um, hopefully they'll stay on top of their tasks. You'll be lucky because you'll have Susan. Okay. I'm not okay. sure. Were you involved in the previous master plan? I was not. No. I'm just curious how many of those suggestions were implemented. Uh, quite a few. Yeah. Um, if you take a look at the master plan, I believe there's one section where I kind of went down the, the checklist of the things that were actually right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, and exact, uh, in fact, I was surprised because my inclination was not a whole lot happened. Uh, and there were a lot that didn't get implemented, but there were quite a few that, in fact, the board uh, and the, uh, uh -huh. you had an implementation to make. Uh, took the initiative on to try to uh, move through and, and move forward. Um, so there actually were quite a few things that didn't get implemented. So, Thank you. that being done, we'll now talk, uh, move on to yeah, Ashley's. Oh, that. okay. This thing here and goal five, the goal listening five. session. Yeah. Who is listening and who is talking? You are listening. For a change? <laughs> <laughs> for the first time? We're just old boys going to listen? Uh, it's listen to give people an opportunity to come and express to you what they see going on in the community and making suggestions or bringing to light things you might want to consider. And sometimes it's nice just to kind of sit back and listen and let ready. people go. I don't know if we're ready for that. In this so so it's interesting. It turned out when they did the all boards meeting uh, a couple of months ago, it actually turned into a listening session of sorts because we summarized what the master plan mm -hmm. was about uh, the update and we got a lot of questions from other boards yeah. in a way that we often don't hear from them yeah. so but this right here is to deal with the businesses yes. and but so if, if we get all the businesses in here mm -hmm. well yes, it's I mean, it, it, it'll be tough to get all the businesses in here but one of the things with, that we should do is like tonight we had a bit two businesses yeah. actually there's more than a couple of them. Yeah. So there's, there's a number of them that come in, and sometimes it turns into a bit of a complaining session. Sometimes it's like, you know, hey, we got this, but can we do this? Right. And I'm like, okay, this is not allowed. Well, should it be? Should it not be? Right. You know, stuff like that. So you, as opposed to a whole group at once during the course of a year, you listen to individual businesses. Right. Well, it's, I, I can recall back when, when I put together that um, impact. Uh, impact, oh, law, sure impact. Sure yeah. impact and you know the, our biggest problem is on there we didn't reach out to all the people especially the businesses that mm -hmm. were impacted with that then after it was put into law yeah. then you get the yeah. out right yeah. I mean you know to eliminate that's right we should listen to all them about before we develop something that affects them. But what this does is it provides the venue. If they do want to come, you can't make them come if they don't want right. to come. Yeah. But at least you provided the opportunity and venue for it. And then when they come after the fact to complain, you've got a little bit of beef in terms of, you know, where were you? 
Yeah, what I would like to see, like, when, when the water bills goes out, a tax bill, mm -hmm. then a note goes out with them, so that goes to every taxpayer. Yeah. You know, and we're going to hold a special session to do that. This is going to be particularly trying for this board well, to listen. It, it's very trying, for, <laughs> and I have that same problem. Uh, because you, the, the you idea finally, you finally admitted it. Huh? Because the idea is in fact that is that you listen, and I have this horrible uh, affliction of wanting to give you the answer, <laughs> and you and you don't do that. You have to really on, on, the other, on the other side of the coin, the APR the Commissioner of Agricultural is doing several listening sessions. Mm -hmm. And to their credit, they listen. Yeah. Now, will there be anything implemented? Remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, it, it was it, an it, hour it, and a half of listening to bit sessions. Yeah, it, and it's 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 a, it's a, it's a, a format that's really in vogue now. I just I've been through a yeah. couple with the yeah, marijuana. That was my next question. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of the, yeah. Um, but it's it's a nice opportunity. It, it is a good opportunity to try to get to listen to public input. And uh, engage the public in what you're doing well, and what you know what they're doing. What is the best way to reach out mm -hmm. to the crowd that you want to bring in? Oh, it depends whether you want to target. Like for the for the business section. For the business section, I would go to the town clerk and see who's right, who's got DBAs, who's got business certificates in the town, and target them. Target them how? Uh, postcard. Yeah. Uh, what many towns do is, I'm not sure if you have it here, uh, but on the town's website you can uh, register your email address and they will shotgun out to you anything that's coming up, you know, before you know, the There's town. a lot of businesses in Abbey. A lot of yep. Lots of them. Well, you could just drive down Route 9 and stuff notices in their mailboxes. <laughs> Something like what Paul Revere did with a horse. Well, I don't, I don't want you to alarm them. Is there any room in our budget for a horse? I don't know. We I can do even, that. We can't even find. We can't even buy the feet to feed them. What about a bicycle? <laughs> you know, maybe a bicycle hire. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Yes. Um, so well, Ashley's here. Um, this is the opportunity. Uh, she's going to talk a little bit about inclusionary zoning. Uh, she has some suggestions for your bylaws that yes. she's taking a look at. Uh, we've also talked about the affordable housing trust, and she's loading up on that. Uh, there are a lot of. A lot of questions on that as well. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, actually. Where'd you go to college? How long have you been doing this? Oh, wow, you want a little yeah. biography. Resume. Oh, um, <laughs> I promise I'm qualified. Um, I got my undergraduate in planning in Westfield, moved out to Oregon for a few years. Um, Oregon. Oregon, yeah. No, Oregon. No, Oregon. 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 Well, I, I got a niece just from that, that was from Oregon. Oh, yeah. she, and she, and she absolutely about it. You pronounce it Oregon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what is the state? Yeah. Anyway, go on. Yeah, oh, Oregon. Uh, She's from Eastern Mass, so you know. It's, yeah, I grew up that, in, in Eastern Mass, so I already have a weird accent to begin with. So okay. it's my my excuse. Um, I've been back in the valley for about two years, um, doing housing related work, and so most recently, I, I feel like I am a well versed expert in inclusionary zoning because I've been helping your neighbors across the river, Hatfield, um, create a bylaw to adopt. Um, and in the process have really just been grappling with all of the logistics and the nitty gritty details of once you adopt it, how do you administer it? Which seems like it's a problem you all have had yes. very mm -hmm. recently. So, sure. yeah. Yes, and so I was had many listening to those office. conversations and was like, oh, how do we make sure that it doesn't happen in Hatfield? Yeah. And, and so I think taking what we've sort of learned there, I've got some suggestions for you all. Okay. Um, and then affordable housing trusts. I know you all, most of you went to that workshop. We all went to the workshop. Okay. 100%. I think we have a uh, pretty deep split on the on board which way about to go. Where, which way to go. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's, I'm not for that at all. And, and, and the split is very, in theory, yeah. I think the housing trust is a good idea, yeah. mm -hmm. but implementing it and using it well and all the stuff that's required to do it is like overwhelming. Yeah, I think that's affordable housing in general, all affordable housing. It's it's a good theory and it, it's just really hard 
But, to, to, my question is, if it's overwhelming, why has Whaley been able to do it, and why has Leverett been able to do it if it's overwhelming? What, what do they know that we don't know? How do you know it's working? So I, I can't speak directly to yeah. Leverett. I wonder if they have some like really passionate uh, people who cool. show up all the time. Well, they were at the workshop. Yeah. As I recall, they were providing uh, bridge financing for projects, mm -hmm. small amounts of money yeah. or uh, for, for like some... closing costs and things like that. Yeah. So they weren't developing housing. Right, so they weren't developing units. So that's a little, it, that didn't have, that doesn't require the, the minor if well, you have actually well, units. What I took out of that meeting was that you could set up trust and it could be funded. And you might not have to do anything or want to do anything with it for years, but the money's there. So this whole idea that somehow it has to be managed and directed and you have to do something is not true. You don't have to do a darn thing with it. Well, it's money in the bank. Okay, let, let, let's, let's leave that aside. Let Ashley talk about what she's really here for and leave the housing trust aside. Wait, wait, I got one question for really, you. Yes, that's what we're How long have you been doing this for? Uh, about two and a half years. So you consider yourself an expert? In inclusionary zoning, yes. In two and a half years? Yes. I've done a lot of research recently. I feel pretty confident about the process. I'm glad you're confident. Uh, I've done it for 40 years. She knows what I know. I've been confirmed. You never knew much exactly. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Trust. Uh, I have a good sense of them. I would not consider myself an expert. Um, so your inclusionary zoning bylaw, I think it's got a lot of good stuff in it. Um, one of the problems that seemed easy to address is building in some more about the process. And and so right now the documents that they're submitting are probably right along the lines of what you would require for your special permit. Um, but if you front load all the requirements that DHCD will need later on, um, so a regulatory agreement, the affirmative marketing plan, um, the deed rider that will go on, if you require all of those in that initial application, most of the work that you'll need at the end of the process will have already been started and it won't be so much of a surprise as our units are now developed and we didn't know we had to market them and do the lottery. Okay. Can, I, I yep. won't interrupt you, can you continue? No, I, I can take your question. That's like a good Can you positive. provide wording so that we can correct, update, or amend our zoning bylaw? Yeah, okay. I can do that. Can send over some suggestions. Um, Did you, do you have on town meeting the attempt to Merge the two? We, well, have, we have four slots on town meeting. Okay. We have to provide text <coughs> basically by our next meeting. Right. Okay. So when is that? So you have so weeks. you have the text to kind of marry the two. Well, no, we really don't have anything to put in yet. Uh, I think you had you made some suggestions. I think last time I gave you one suggestion was to tidy up senior housing. So no, I think these two. Uh, it was. Okay, it was this. It was to include senior housing as a type of inclusionary zone. Okay, which it already is. Right, right. So it's, it keeps it in the two. But there were inconsistencies, and you were melding them into. Yes, yes, and that's what that, and that's what this is. We agree on. Right, right. And that's what this was. Correct. Okay. okay. And that's what this was. It was taking a bunch of stuff out of here. Right, correct. Right. And moving it into here, okay. and then coordinating the two. So that were, so if you were applying for this, you were also applying this. Okay. So that, that's, the, that's the two yeah. issues. That's assembly, um, 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 that you're correct to the senior, senior housing, Ashley will have more to come. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so and then, <clears throat> don't try to get us all the stuff in two weeks. Yeah. I would rather put that in for, the, for, the, for this coming annual town mm -hmm. meeting. Look at what you're proposing yeah. and do it we don't need to rush that. Right. Yeah. We have nobody breathing down our neck that we got to jump into this right away. Yeah. And we could do it for the fall. Okay. Okay. So you're suggesting new Larry's on the annual okay. and Ashley's okay. down the road, which would be more of a rewrite of the affordable. 
uh, of the inclusion area. Yeah, I would. Add, I don't think so much an entire rewrite, but adding in a section on um, additional Quietly submission required. requirements um, requirements. was really the big thing that I saw. Does that have to be included in the zoning bylaws, or does that could be an addendum? Planning board regulations. Right. Like that. that. That's exactly. Mm. If it, the only thing is, if it's in the zoning bylaw, people don't always have access to the regulations. At least if it's in the zoning. I'm, I'm just making that. It's point. right there. I don't know. It's in the zoning bylaw. It's not likely to change much. Yeah. And somebody looks at the uh, applicant looks, they see it in the zoning bylaw. Okay, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not against the regulations. I'm just thinking that it's more obvious mm -hmm. in the zoning bylaw. So I have seen some other towns. The online provider we have for the regulations, uh, for the zoning bylaw, yep. is able to incorporate regulations. We just don't have any that we have generated yet. Oh, okay. But it can be integrated. It'll be beside, but not a part of the zoning bylaw. So it'd be a link from it. You could click on it; it would take you to it. Yeah, when you go to this e-code or whatever it is that we use, yeah. it would just be another. <clears throat> there'd be the zoning bylaw, and then there'd be zoning regulations okay. as a second. I worry that that would get complicated. I, I think I side more with you on the sense of if it's if you're reading through I've triggered this now here's what it is here's the other things I have to yeah, include. I, I, I'm just wondering about that if it was if it was a link like you say yeah. that you see it link here to the regulation for this section yeah. that's one thing but if it's another document right that's right it's, it's going to get lost in the shop. The link works great if you're online doing it digitally yeah. but if you're doing hard copies. Um, yeah. That might not work for you. Well, we, we can talk about which is yeah. the best way to do it. Long as we, once we see what it looks like. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Proceed. Um, the other thing that Larry and I have talked a bit about, and I think you all have talked about, is this discussion of whether or not you want to include a payment in lieu of building the actual uh, unit yes. on site. Which this um, document they're going to be doing at the springtime meeting takes up. Yeah. But they want to talk about down the road with the trust putting it back in. Or is there another way to do a payment in lieu without having a trust? So if you don't have a trust and you accept the payment in lieu, it goes into your general fund. So you can still accept it without the trust. But can you hold it into a separate account? How do you keep it from getting spent on fire trucks? Yeah, I think that's the right. problem. Yeah. Well, in, 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 in any, any unique account would be the question. Would yeah, can you put a dedicated account? Can you put it in a dedicated account? I don't know. Yeah. Is, your, is your group going to handle these things like a developer comes in like Roberts? Is your group going to handle stuff like that? Well, we talked about We got the training for it. Yeah, so the, the marketing and the lottery. Yes. Um, right, yes. the screening and the whole. Yeah. yeah, so we've decided that we are not going to provide that service. Okay. Um, yeah. As of right now. It's complicated. Well, it is onerous. Is there a list of people that actually do that? Yes. yes. The state has a list. Do you have a list? I do not have the list. I can get the list yeah. can, from can, the state. Can you get us yeah. how to get to can you just tell us how to get to the list? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sure. I can get the list and send it to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, no, it was, but it was the people on the list that Barry went to that made him and, and choke when he found out what the cost was. We understand why the cost is high yeah. it's the the marketing plan and running the lottery seems really easy it's it's actually the income verification where you're checking people's past assets and assets they might have disposed of in bank accounts and yeah. and that was something that we felt we should be playing a role yeah. in. I mean, our, our takeaway when we started looking at this and from this whole affordable housing uh, issue is the state is you know uh, is doing a very good job being an advocate and trying to promote it on the other hand, they made it so complicated. Uh, I, I, my feeling is it's overly complicated mm -hmm. to do it that it really is a disincentive to do it. It makes it too difficult to do That's it. That's why nobody in the town wants to even bother with it. Uh, I think in large part, some when they start looking at the details. Yeah. Yeah. Or a lot of places are adopting it, not recognizing yeah. the details. Um, you know, they adopt yeah, the model, I, like you adopt the thing, model, and then you. One thing that I would want to see is just like what you said. You take this money from a developer and you go buy a fire truck out of it. Right. Yeah. That defeats the whole purpose of the whole thing. Correct. Right. Yeah. We, we don't want it in a general fund. Right. We want it in a dedicated account if that's possible. Yeah. So I'll see if 
if it's possible to have a revolving fund of some sort. Yeah, without right. the trust. Well, that would be a, yeah, I know, I know revolving funds are limited somewhat, but that's worth thinking to look at. But the way I look at this, if we can get the developer <coughs> to develop that unit, someone to process, process the paperwork, then we got that unit on our inventory. Yeah. And the money is spent for that housing. Right. In the story, right? And that is, in fact, I think the most cost-effective way to get the units created. Right. I was um, I was at a presentation this past weekend on getting units counted, and um, the presenters from the Mass Housing Partnership had even said they highly recommend avoiding putting the fee option in your zoning bylaw. The one time they felt like it worked really well was. Um, there was a provision for inclusionary zoning on the Cape and somebody was developing half a million dollar homes. So instead of getting two units of housing, their housing trust got a million dollars. And they're like, hey, that worked great for us. But most times you're not gonna get that amount of money to then turn so around and develop In housing. fact, that actually is not unlike our situation. We have, um, we have neighborhoods mm -hmm. of half million dollar houses yep. that are going up. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, Barry's, uh, Barry Roberts' senior housing, I don't know. He, 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 he has, has, some he, he has almost 400,000 reserved for this trust, trust housing trust fund. Yeah. But how much per unit is, he, uh, what is he selling units for, do you know? Anyone he's know? selling between 390 to 500, I think. I was going to say 350, but it, it's up there. Yeah. But the whole point with this thing is he can go off site, yes. keep his high end there, yeah. and go Some off house. site, mm -hmm. whether he rehabs or buys a house mm -hmm. and converts it into yeah. it, and still qualifies for that. That's true. And again, we got it on our inventory. Yeah. We don't have all these trust things to deal with or nothing. Yeah. Because yeah. I think the challenge with the trust, like, yes, it could sit there and just develop money but i think the whole idea of the trust is if you're developing one you want an action plan for how the money is going to be spent and, and that there will be if the, if the town needs an action plan immediately but how many flush yeah how many sitting at 14 percent yes so you know, yeah and, 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 and our current housing rate we are good for roughly 60 years before we fall to 10 percent so yeah, just be aware of that. No, so, no, I, so, I, what, like, so what we're yeah. simply what we're simply trying to do, we're not trying to rush. No. We simply want to plan, and it doesn't have to be next year or this year. Yeah. We want to plan, and, and if we don't spend, to my point, if we don't spend anything, if we build up this fund for, I don't know, several years, we simply want to have the fund there that if the right project comes along, that you could assist, we could apply it. Okay. But again, as far as I look at it on the business end, that pay as you go, the businesses or the developments come in, they pay as they go. You put something in there, then you're worried about where is that going to end up? It could end up anywhere where you have no control on it. Yeah. This way, this board has control that this is going into that fund, that goes on our inventory, and a job's completed. So Done. We're on to the next one. What's been, this is all triggered by the fact that we have had low development for several Many years. years. Yes. And now, uh, all of a sudden, we have a couple of projects yeah. online. And what, what is those six houses? Big deal. Well, that's... We're, we're, we're not getting inundated with, 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 with residential. Yeah. Okay. You're getting your few well, businesses. Well, the well. other thing that I would add is, so I looked at your subsidized housing inventory today, and it's it's outdated a little bit. I'm waiting for a new copy from the state, which updated uh, this past September. But almost 105 of your units are slated to come offline eventually. So their, their affordability restriction expires. Um, Mountain View Apartments, which is 25 units, expires in 2023. And Winfield Seniors, there were two. One was 80 units that's in perpetuity, and the other is 80 units that come offline in 2032. 
So, okay, so yeah. we, we don't so that number drops. That number will yeah. drop I, at some point. Yeah, I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's a, there's a feeling always, you know, it's forever. Uh, but most programs, it's not forever. Right. Well, well, did, you talked about that yeah. here before. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And some of them, depending on who the subsidizing agency and what the funding is, if it's DHCD, for example, there could be a scramble in 2030 to make sure there is funding yeah. in place so to expend it, but that's not guaranteed. That's all the more reason that these developers come in now, that we make them do it and then make it in and you forever. Keep building it right? Out. That whatever that building they make for affordable housing stays there forever, not for 20 years and it disappears. Right? Yeah. We right? Need, yeah. Yeah. What do you have for our total housing units? Do you have two thousand two hundred and eighty? I think that I don't I didn't write that down, but it was something like okay. that. Uh, so we're at yeah. roughly thirteen percent now. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean North Hampton had that issue. Uh was so River Bay was coming was, was coming due. Impact. Why does it always have a sunset? Down to it's the way the funding the underwriting funding program. Is that what you said uh, thirty? Mm -hmm. What did you say the number was? In the, in the care of the developer was, hey, in 30 years you'll be able to go market on these. And we right. have, um, and that's what we that's what got the involved in. Then what happened was when the 30 years was so ending, uh, the state and the city stepped in and renegotiated like uh, the deal with the developer. So it's 105 drop off you down to one. And they're now doing that in a development might okay. uh, 120 there. affordable units. Yes. <clears throat> but there's one thing that this town doesn't want to open up for uh, chapter 40 b yeah. Then what? That, that's that. That's well. That's, although that's there is that's the safe harbor. As there's there. someone coming in. The guy that's coming in is going to build 40 units. Yeah. And ever whatever it is. The, 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 the gentleman that put up Winfield Housing wants mm -hmm. to put 40 more units of senior housing. Yeah. So if he has to comply with the with the um, bylaw, he have to put in so many units of mm -hmm. 40. Yes. And we'll make sure that that's in perpetuity. Yeah. 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 That's that's the preferred. Definitely. And it's I think your inclusionary bylaw being in place is really smart because as your denominator grows, you're going to make sure. That you're, is it your numerator? Denominator. That your top number will continue to exist as well. Okay. <laughs> this is not a math major. <laughs> numerator is top. Yeah. What did you say? You were top right? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 watch that. Oh, um, what's wrong with that? Billy women are. Absolutely, there are. Better than the guys. Okay, so we are going to do, we're going to get the two, your two drafts. Yeah. Um, we're going to sort of defer. Your, I'm going to, I'll send along. Keep working on that. Yes. And we're not, I don't think we're ruling out the housing trust fund, but it's not. Something is going to go on the uh, anytime meeting, anytime soon. Uh, right. The other thing I can do with the trust is so Shelly, who came out to give that presentation, if you guys want to have a serious conversation about that and really start to work through the pros and cons, I can get her back out here. Yes. She's sort of like the state expert. Yeah. So if that she's is a using conversation. Your no, so she works for the Mass Housing Partnership. Okay. And they have free technical assistance and my gripe is that they don't come out to Western Mass as often she, as I'm like. Did I just see she's coming out for the next Iron Valley Planning Commission? No, meeting. that's Chris Clutch. Chris Clutchman. Chris Clutchman oh, no. to talk about the. Uh, someone from Mass Housing Partnership. Yeah, someone from their data center is okay. coming out yeah. as well. well but. Different topics. Clearly, really, we have a segregated account that could be touched and accomplish a lot of the things that a trust accomplishes, but what can a trust do that a segregated account can't do? Spend the money. Mm -hmm. spend, yeah. the, spend the money and be the advocate for it. Uh -huh. Right. Be an advocate. Get, more, get a lot more housing here. And I think if you had a, a group of five, like obviously as the planning board, you're probably stretched a bit thin. You're doing stuff all the time. And so if there was a separate group of five to nine people whose sole responsibility was and that's, that's to figure out affordable housing. That's the other. That's what could be a con, too, that, is yeah. do you have five volunteers. Yeah, yeah that's the other. Yeah. The other uh, point that there are board, there are multiple boards in town that do not have full complement. Yeah. You just can't seem to get people. Right. To, you know, I, I'm sure we're really interested in those people that set up this housing that we could talk to. If they would come out, whether it's businesses or consultants or whoever they are. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know how many are those in, in the immediate area? For the people that do the lotteries? Yes, right. It's a low like two or three. number. It's, yeah, it's most of, I think there's maybe 25 to 30 across the state, and most of them are in Eastern Mass where the real demand for those services are. So how many, do you don't know how many in Western Mass or? It's less than, I think it's less than a half dozen. Yeah. It's a handful. And, and some well, of them the are. the more the cheaper it is. You get no, two or yeah. three, then the price is jacked yeah. right up. I can't imagine you could make a decent living running one of those. Well, well no, they, they do. Businesses. Yeah, they, 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 they have multiple businesses. Exactly. They, they haven't brought a breadth of scope of what they do. Yeah. This is just one. Yeah, or some of them will be like Valley CDC is certified to do it because they do it for their own projects. projects. Yep. And so sometimes if they have the capacity, <coughs> they'll take on doing it for a private developer. Mm -hmm. um, but for them, it's easy to say like, we're too busy right now. No, thank you. Right. Um, and so some of it's like that Habitat for Humanity is another one that is certified to do it because they do it for their Well, if you got a half a dozen, a dozen, you got a selection to pick. Yeah, which I think is our problem out here is that we right. don't have the demand. Right. Uh, or the, well, one, the demand to necessitate the multiple. Well, I just think it'd be kind of nice that the board had a, had a selection there and someone came in here, pick out what you want. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of the boat they're in. And they're not going to say, well, I can't find it. Well, we got them right. here for you. Yeah. yeah. Stop looking. Yeah. The other thing that's been suggested to me a lot as I've called people from across the state and I'll test the waters with you to think if this might be something you'd be interested in. Um, so in Eastern Mass, there are a lot of small towns that have very limited staff but want to do housing work and, and they have some of the demand. And so they've started to create uh, regional housing, regional shared housing offices. Um, the most popular one is out of Sudbury. And what they do is, so they've partnered with like five or six towns around them. Um, they pay dues based off of how many subsidized housing units they have. Um, and they've set up this formula so that it's, it's set out. And essentially they have, um, I think that office has three staff now because they have enough units to do that. But so that person ends up becoming the person who's hired becomes the point person to work with the developers who have triggered this bylaw to really walk them through the process, make sure all the documents that need to go to the state are done. They do the monitoring of the units every year. So they become this resource that all of the towns that pay into this office can start to say, you've triggered this, it's a complicated process, here's your point person. And so that's one of the options of, of things that I'm thinking might make sense in our region at some point. So I, I kind of disagree with that because mm -hmm. the turnover in a small town like this is not large. So if we got five houses in five years or three years, yeah. then you're paying every year to a group that's, what are they doing? Nothing. Yeah. Well, so in Sudbury, they will also start to do like, you know, they'll help you implement part of your housing production plan. So you come up with a work plan so that you're not paying them to do right. nothing all year. So it might be cheaper to pay a little bit each year than pay more to retrain someone right. every, once every five years. <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll have to look at the numbers. But Bill, if, if, if we give a list of people that do this, we hand it to the developer, you're going to hire one of these persons to do the book work and do the screening. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there, when they finish the job, that goes on to have yeah. these but lists. I think that it, it is, it's the kind of project that sounds like it would be a great fit for you yeah. if you have the time to do it, or exactly. Franklin Regional Council yeah. of Government. Yeah. So if you have the time to do it, you have the volume. Yeah. Something yeah. There's a certain amount of regularity to it. Something like <coughs> have a planning board, instead of getting a full-time planner, hire a valley to yeah. do it. Yeah. So yep. there was some suggestion that the the original master plan that there should be a full time planner in Hadley. Well, you're retired, so why don't you step so, up to the but, uh, <laughs> He's not retired. He's working harder than ever. Mm -hmm. But what what's just curious? Yeah. What's Hadfield's percentage? Three percent? I think it's two. Two. It's pretty yeah. dismal. Yeah. Well, there. <laughs> Sunderland is four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whiteley is. Yeah. But, the, but their um, growth is really South slow. Hadley too. Yeah. We. Uh, Hatfield is sort of like in a bubble. Um, they have very little 
growth. It's almost like people don't know that they're there. Right. Well, you want to the river, that's why. Yeah. There's a story behind <laughs> that. There is a history behind it. Oh, there really? Oh. There's a history <laughs> yeah. behind it. The original planning uh, came from a document by Ted Bacon, who was the dean at Amherst okay. College. And he had a checklist. And the checklist, what do you want your frontage to be? Everybody started off at 125 foot frontage. Mm -hmm. And then KB Holmes came in and Plantation Estates in Hatfield, and everybody panicked. Hadley went from 125 to 150. Yeah. Hatfield went from 125 to 200 foot frontage. Mm. That precluded all development for roughly 30 years. The adverse effect of that is three years ago, their high school yeah. only graduated 18 kids. Yeah. yeah. They have issues. So their town is radically yeah, really changed. Well, that, 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 that's exactly what, what we are talking about. That's how that developed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to just point something out, though. There might not be a good correlation between the, the number of people in high school and the number of houses you build. They're, well, they're not building. Well, it's not really well, you know, I, I, I disagree. We'll discuss that <laughs> later on. But I disagree. Yeah. But anyways, OK. So I will I disagree with both send. Yeah, some suggested revisions on this. Okay. Yeah. If you want to have a conversation about the housing trust and would like like the expert in the state to come out, I can help coordinate that. I think I, you're um, you're way above us already, so <laughs> you're our expert. The thing I think we do. Yeah. But not in the too near future. Yeah. I think we right. get through town I think we want to get the rest of this stuff out of the yeah. way and go with it. And have a win when you're ready to do it. You know, sometime yeah. maybe late this summer or in the fall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think there's any rush. It makes um, sense. And also, I want to, if she could possibly do it, get consultants to come in there and yeah. Yeah. tell us how they do it. Once we get the list, we'll have a better idea. That's an idea. You know, if we can get one of these Valley CDC or somebody in to come in and talk to us, that would be really good. About their marketing process. Yeah, how they actually do it. Well, you know, what, what is that? What the services they provide. You know, some services they provide, <coughs> you know, a, a little bit of a sales pitch, but a lot of just plain information yeah. and stuff. So and I would say know. that's not going to be a one stop shop. So they will come in and do the, the, the developer will hire them to create their marketing plan, run the lottery, and do the lease up. If it's a rental development, they're going to have a property management agency in that will check income verification every year for those affordable units. But there are still responsibilities that the town has to do for these affordable units that the marketing and lottery agent wouldn't do. So when the development happens, the town enters into an agreement with the developer and DHCD. And so there's some application processing that the town's responsible for. And then every year, the property management agency will send the income verification documents to the town. The town is then responsible for sending those off to the state. So there's some like ongoing monitoring that the town sort of has to figure out how they're going to do. Who, what, who, who does that? Who normally does that in town? So I've heard in a lot of towns it's the planner, which you all don't have. Um, that Joe over there, he's got a lot of his hands retired. Town administrator, okay. And I think that's where that regional housing office has sort of been filling that need in the eastern part of the state because those towns, I think they might have planners, but they felt like they didn't have somebody well versed in housing. And but so once, you, once this off. thing is set up, how difficult it is to do the paperwork and file it? Once it's all set up. I mean, it's going to vary from each development. The paperwork's not complicated. It's the monitoring, the ongoing monitoring that can take time. Um, and so in some towns, like the town of Acton, um, over the years, they've come up with a system for how they do the, the annual monitoring and reporting to the state. And so it's become very streamlined for them. But obviously, just starting out, it's the monitoring will take time to do. You only have a couple of units. Does the town have to monitor, or is that... The, the, the guy they hired to monitor. But, but I mean in the sense of like developments. Oh, oh so it, it goes by development, not by unit. Yeah, I mean you'll monitor the unit, so but monitor. you'll get like one packet from the development developer okay. that then has to get. So down. that's something that's supposed to be ongoing? Yeah, you're supposed to be doing that every year right now. Every year. So... <laughs> Who's, doing, who's been doing it here? Who's been doing it? Probably <laughs> nobody. Good question. So, Windfield or... Uh, 
Winfield. Mountain View are supposed to send yes. these things to the town. Yeah. They, they get a tax break too, so uh, it behooves the just. And then do you have any affordable home ownership units in town? No. No, okay. All, all rentals. Yeah. Because there's a whole other process with ownership. Yeah, and that's much more complex, I think. Because that's what Barry's running into because Mr. Roberts is um, doing ownership of the senior housing, mm. not rentals. Selling them is more complicated. From the town perspective, the monitoring every year is easy because you just send a letter reminding the owner that they can't remortgage the house and if they do any um, additions or improvements they have to notify you and the state. It's the resale that gets complicated on those. But the monitoring, I think, yearly is easier. So once that unit is sold for affordable, yeah. they can't touch that unless they get permission to do anything into that house? Or if they touch it, yeah, so they have to get the permission. It's because it's all based off of, so when you sell the house down the road, it's all the, the amount that you are able to sell it for is based off of what you initially bought it for but so if you decided that you wanted to add another bedroom on clearly you've put some equity into the house and you should be able to get that out and so the state just makes you go through a process to verify that you have in fact added equity so that you can recapture it when you sell the house because you're still selling it at an affordable level yeah but is that house when it sells does it have to be appraised at that at that time at that point yeah but then there's a formula that they'll do to set the, the, the level at which you can resell it as an affordable unit. So Mountain View is going to have 105 units come off the affordable mm -hmm. housing market. Um, in Amherst, there was a, uh, a complex. Mountain View was 25. Yeah. 25. Did I say 100? How many? 25. 25. There's 105 oh, okay. in total uh, because there's 80 at Winfield. The question so is, is in Amherst, they put some pressure on a, uh, a I, I guess, an apartment complex that was coming off the affordable and was going to go to market rate. Yeah. And they put pressure on, so they did not make that transition. Mm -hmm. What kind of pressure can we put on to say that these affordable units should not come off? I mean, it's, it's the same as it did in Northampton. Uh, you, you know, you, somebody from the town has to get together with somebody from the state, yeah. and then they have to sit down with the developer and try to renegotiate. Yeah, so I think a good example, so in Northampton, they were about to lose quite a few uh, because the funding was expiring, and the developer in that case had said, I only want them if you can give me project-based Section 8 vouchers which means like a voucher that goes to the unit and in that case the town of Northampton or the city was like we don't we don't have any of that in our back pocket to just give you and so it was sort of a, a hunt around the region to find out if any of the housing authorities that have the ability to send their vouchers elsewhere had some that they could give. What, what, what is what is what you just said? Section 8 vouchers. Section 8 vouchers so they're they're from the government and they're so typically they go to a household and so you, you then have you pay 30% of your income for rent and the government will match the difference up to a cap. But the, the government has switched over to project basing them, meaning instead of being, in some cases, there's still ones that go to families and you go out into the private market, but instead of your traditional public housing model where they're investing, um, they're giving private developers these project-based Section 8 vouchers, which ties the subsidy to a unit instead of a family. Right. And so the family will come in and pay 30%, and the government, either the state or the federal government, will pay the difference. Right. But that doesn't so the Section 8 voucher is, I'm going to give you the Section 8 voucher, uh, you know, we, we, we'll underwrite X amount of whatever the rent is, and then yeah. you've got to go and find a place. Where this is instead saying, you've got to find a place voucher. that will accept your Section 8. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was a way that they were able to negotiate with the developer, get him what he wanted, and keep the units um, affordable. With the one in Amherst, I think it was Beacon, who, yes. and they ended up, I think, refinancing with a, like a mass housing. Um, but isn't mortgage. it true on that Section 8, that voucher, and they pay the 30%, that doesn't add up to what that they can get on the market, it's below that market, isn't it? Well, it's guaranteed. In some places. Yeah. They will cap it. 
And it's certain. The state controls that though, yeah, right? Yeah, the cap. And right. so, so sometimes you can't get. Market value, like what's yeah. going on here. Sometimes you can't survive. So right. And so sometimes it, it ends up being, that's one of the challenges we're seeing in the region is because the whole region, the rent is set, including Springfield, Holyoke, Northampton, Amherst, right. that it can be challenging. But the, the place-based Section 8 will take out some of that discrepancy, which is really in the weeds. But this, this, community, <laughs> this community, because we're surrounded by colleges, rent is way, yeah. way oh, yeah. up here. You have one of the highest uh, per capita and housing values in the region. Yeah, because of the colleges. Yeah, That's well, Bill pointed out, you, you are recession-proof yeah. uh, yeah. in large part. Uh, Micro-economy. Yeah. So, to be okay. continued. Housing is complicated. I'll send you some uh, suggestions. Okay. Yeah. For the following. Ask you then, sure. on, um, you so Tylenol. Talk a little bit about MS4 <laughs> compliance. <laughs> yep. And were you able to take a look at the proposal? So, I, I forget her name, the other person. Someone had a grant from PBPC to work with Hadley. Yes, I talked to her. Uh, Corin. Okay. And Corin said she had sent. Was it, were you the contact? I was one of. Uh, okay, she believes she sent whatever the final thing was that had to have been okay. sent to you. So she thinks you got your your okay flush. Both zoning and, and regular bylaw uh, uh, Whatever the MS4 was covering, I okay. I talked to her in generalities about that program, but not, <laughs> not the details. So. Okay, so do you have her email address? You must have her email. address. If you don't have uh, it, yes, I, I'm sure. I'm sure I, I got it. Okay, uh, I'm just looking. Yeah, but I, I did ask her that. Okay, so I think um, I will. I'll go through my email just to see what what I have. I'm not. I vaguely remember it coming in and my forwarding yeah. it to everyone, but I can I can remember something about the yeah. for. I, I have not seen it. Okay, but so but I've done it for other communities. So we have two articles. I suppose they could even be combined in, well, probably they should go as two separate articles for the, for the uh, tiny senior housing and updating inclusion. You, you, you might want to do it as one, so it's an all or nothing thing, since they are so closely integrated. In other words, you wouldn't want one to pass and one to fail, because that kind of messes up the one that passed. Yeah. 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 We, we, depending on how complicated, we should be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, Picking strategy. Yeah. Okay. And then MS4, is it still, so this is just moving along. We still don't know exactly when it's going to hit. They, they the, the MS4 conference that, I mean, you, you've heard it from the different people, but at the conference that we went to in Springfield. You went with Marvel, right? Yeah. I went with Marvel. Yeah. So they anticipate that being implemented sometime this summer. Okay. Okay. So, so we have it. to have it. That has to be spring town yeah. meeting. Yeah. yeah. I've heard a rumor that it's going to be postponed the year because it's a little bit they, more they, And they, they mentioned that. Yeah. And they've been doing that every year. And, and but they said they, they delayed it so many times right. that they didn't have And this was the EPA I think and EPA's, the DEP yeah. presenting. I think, I think EPA is getting. And it. they didn't anticipate the interest to delay it another year. A couple of months, maybe. Mm -hmm. But they says, you know, we don't think it's going to be delayed a full year, but there's no guarantee. Right. You when you talk about, about EPA, you're talking about the Federal Environmental Protection Agency or Massachusetts one? State. Massachusetts. That's, that's called something else. It's not going to be there. Mass is DEP. Yeah. 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 This, this. MS4 is EPA. Yeah. MS4 yeah. is EPA. Yes. yes. Well, we've got a new. Can we administer it through the county? Yes. yes. A new yes. sheriff in town. Yes. Yes. Mass <laughs> no. is one of. And they, I, I like they, they made that comment in the presentation that Mass is one of few states where DEP and EPA are basically synonymous. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the, the, it's the EDA now, yeah, the environment will be regulated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so anyway, I would, I would, I would, okay. I would, so I'm going to put that, um, okay, mark for April 3rd. Um, 
finalize <laughs> finalize bylaws. I'll get those. I'll just send those to you again. Yeah, send those yeah. to me again. Okay, please. <coughs> what happened there? What happened where? At that commission meeting. You showing me something? Huh? What commission meeting? This commission meeting? Wasn't it wasn't it when the nineteenth? Yesterday? What was that? Uh, no, no, this is the date of the email. Oh. Yeah, they're going to be uh, talking about the housing choice initiative. Yeah, that's going to be. They're going to talk about the housing there. Well, it's a different a program. Different program. It's, a, it's a program the state has to try to promote housing uh, across the board, uh, of which most of our communities aren't going to qualify for. Yeah. Um, You're right on the list of qualifying sure. communities. Sadly. Yeah, I think only a, <laughs> uh, only a handful. Yeah. It's a based what, on production. What is that supposed to be? It's on the rest of the email. I mean, that's how it's, I got off this thing. It's, it's that's what I thought that was the date. Fabian, the, the flip side. Is it in April? No. Yeah, when it's, it's usually a Thursday. It's like the second Thursday. I'll, uh, it, we just got the notice. You're the alternate yeah. no. anyway, so you should have gotten the, the full notice. Yeah, I think he just printed up. Yeah. His email and only the first part of it. And I think email. that was just more like the location has changed. That can fall on Larry, the Larry, on goal number four, discuss farmland impacts in review of subdivision plans. Mm -hmm. uh, is there an agenda there that I'm missing? You know? Hmm. We just redid our subdivision regulations. Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of of uh, because there's a farm there, you can't do the subdivision next door. But I think if they're going to do the subdivision next door, taking mm -hmm. taking into consideration there is a farm there, you might want to tweak the layout of it mm -hmm. um, to address any incompatib incompatibilities. Yeah, one thing you, you know, with primary goal for our, our master plan was to preserve open space, especially agricultural land. Yep. I don't see anything trying to implement anything to promote farming and make it easier, better, or try to comply with the wishes of the town as indicated in the master plan. Uh, there, yeah. there is here someplace. It might be under Conservation Commission. It's under Economic Development. Uh, yes. Goal one. Discuss ensuring that agriculture remains a viable economic activity. Well, you know, well, the thing that encourages yeah. farming is whether or not it's economic to farm. Correct. Look, look at what's happening with tobacco this year. How many people are planting tobacco now that this year didn't plant it last year because all of a sudden it's, it's worthwhile? Yeah. And then people are looking for tobacco sheds to rent. Well, that's. Well, the name of the game. On the other hand, the dairy the dairy check was a little leaner this month. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you have anything else, actually, for the fourth? Not right okay. now. I have one thing. Yes. Uh, and it has to do where we are finalizing the uh, CPA committee uh, community preservation oh, plan. That was my. And uh, we're finalizing it to bring back the draft to start reviewing it with the committee. And one of the things I'm doing is we're formalizing a process uh, that applicants have to go through. And so what we're suggesting is if you're applying for funding to do an open space project, we want you to go to the Conservation Commission, Commission, Conservation Commission first, run it by them, and get their consent so they can weigh into it. If it's an historic project, go to the Historical Commission. If it's a recreation project, park and rec. And if it's a housing project, uh, we had talked about go to the Housing Authority. I'm wondering if it's a housing whether it ought to come here because as well because you guys really talk about that a lot. Uh, well, it, so I'm wondering it, if, if we have a representative from the Con Conservation correct. Commission, from the Historical Society, and from the right. Planning Board, and uh, but we want them to actually go to the boards or go to the commissions and run the project by them. Well, and just because just because the commission might give it a thumbs down might not be, you know, doesn't mean that the CPA committee has to give it a thumbs down. But we just want to make sure that the commissions and the committees under whose umbrella it sort of falls get a chance to review it to see whether it's compatible with what they have in mind. Is the housing authority even going to want to hear it if they did? They said they would, but oh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure you're not the best place. Well, the housing authority wants new windows in, so yes, uh, yes, no, I, I understand. Is that maintenance or is that? But I'm looking at you and more in terms of somebody comes in yes. and looks for CK money to help underwrite or provide subsidy right. yeah. money. Yeah. 
if, if you guys aren't a, a, a right. good board for the housing authority talk, has though. made it clear they're not interested in anything other than the management yeah. of their own units. Yeah. But they did agree to review applications. They, I met with them and they were okay with that. Um, uh, for, uh, for all proposed projects, but I'm thinking that okay. you guys might be good too. What do you think? Right, I don't. For for a regular housing deal, yes, I would think so. Yeah, like a, a and it's not, you know, again, a CPA committee, a CPA money can only be used for certain types of projects. Right, and they call it community housing. Yeah, well, yeah, we can't use it for repairs. No, and they can't use it for market rate. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but if they do come with a project, um, you guys seem to have a pretty good handle mm -hmm. on the town's housing needs and. The, you actually seem to be you know, in town. They could about. use CPA for that North Alley Hall for over 55 affordable units, right? Um, they can use it for community housing. Right. Yeah. I'm going to throw a wrench into right. your evening and just remind you that any units created under CPA money, if you want them to count on your subsidized housing inventory, have to go through the same process the inclusionary zone right. units have. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. Yeah. keep it complicated. Yeah. No, we, we, we realize that, that they're, they're, yeah. they're uh, it's not a standalone. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, so sitting here tonight, I'm thinking I might want to integrate you guys into that process, unless you don't want to. No, I think it probably makes more sense for us to do I, that. I agree. Housing. I mean, it's sort of an informal review. <coughs> you know, it doesn't tie anybody's hands, but at least it gives uh, uh, you guys a shot to take take a look at it, make comments. Okay. Did you know that our historical commission is a design? So we're I had a look at that for me. Our <laughs> historical commission. Well, I know they were under they were under under person when I met with them. They're not this Thank you. Our responsibility now. Like yeah. Did they, Jim? My historical commission said it's not our. The historical commission used to review. Site plan for right. the village overlay district. Okay. And well, probably a couple of months ago now, they decided they no longer want that task. Okay. And that they said that the it'll revert to the planning board for review. Okay. So okay. It was always that's, our responsibility. I mean, yeah, yeah, the, we had the buck stops here anyway. Yeah, we yeah. had uh, we had sort of subcontracted with them for right. aesthetic approval yeah. because they asked for it. Sure, and that's, and that's yeah. a nice thing to do. They've had a turnover of uh, personnel and... Yeah, I know when I met with them, they were, uh, uh, that was a, just about the minimum that they right. had to meet. two people now. Uh, well, that's even mm. fewer than when I met with them. <laughs> okay. Dropping quick. So, okay. Okay. Well, maybe, so, maybe you have any free evenings you'd like to join the historical commission. Mm -hmm. Is it worthwhile for you to come in in two weeks later or should we wait until the first Tuesday in May? Um, the next meeting I was going to come in for was with Susan so you could meet Susan and start talking about the uh, implementation plan for the master plan. When, when would you like to do that? When are you no longer? I am formally done end of June, but I am starting to pass things off. So maybe April third would be a good time to meet. Okay, do it April. April third. Yeah, yeah and we're, we'll be talking about bylaws then anyway. Okay. So, so we have nothing special on the agenda except walk in and, and you. Yeah. So that would be good too. Okay, that's good. And that, what are you going for April third? No, just boy, that will if we can get. Susan acclimated to you all. <laughs> this is what? Is this Larry and Sue? Susan. Bogota. Susan. Oh, no kidding. This supposed as Colombiana. Nice. Very loud as one on one hand. You look better than me. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did you say? I said, so, what in Spanish? I when, um, in Spanish. when do you want to schedule the public hearing on the bylaws? Do you want to? We have time to set that up for the third? No. No. Okay. Are you in Columbia? We could set that up for the third. We have some friends who are from Columbia. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, like Mark Fuso? What do you think? What is the touch? Right? Paul Dustle? Yeah, really? <gasps> okay. Uh, that's yeah. What's the Wagner? Wagner. Wagner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul is still on the plane. Paul is still on the plane. Yeah, they've got a good plane board. 
Wagner. Yep. So yeah. 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 yeah, we had them over. They were showing them our Cuba slides. They were showing them the you know, demand is really low in town, but I think for housing, right? Not demand, but. They said, you think that's colorful? And they gave me this. They had very slow growth, but I think they're thinking we're going to go actively if demand ever does pick up and they start to get more of those high short, they get some of those affordable units in. What the hell is the 20 days before me? If we hold the hearing more than 20 days before the town meeting, we do not have to make a recommendation. If we hold it less than 20 days, we have to make a recommendation for or against. Yeah, because it's the 20 days or it's expired. You're yeah. right, you're exactly so, right. Sometimes we have found, especially when we have articles coming so in by is petition. That, what is that a bylaw or what is it? State, state law. law. Yes, state law. So sometimes we come in and find some, somebody brings in an article by petition. It may have the best of intentions. It's awkwardly worded, or we just don't want to endorse it. Yeah. We will hold the meeting more than 20 days before and take no, uh, take no vote. Just won't vote on it. Right. Yeah. We did that with Tiny House. Yeah. So we, that she we, we took no official stand. Yeah, we didn't say yay or nay. We said throw let it, her go to throw town it meeting out there and, and explain it. Yeah. Yeah. But conversely, we have held public hearings on the night just prior to the town we've meeting. Done that too. But we've also had to make sure we schedule a meeting, a regular meeting, in there so that you have time to make a recommendation to deliver 20 minutes later at town meeting. <laughs> it's, it's, well, we've never held a meeting. It's all about time. We've never held a meeting of town. It is. They have of town. Oh, we have. Been the <laughs> we have. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we had one in Covington. <laughs> and they're on the phone calling all the neighbors within a walking distance to come to get come the quorum. Oh. That was, it was funny. That was like a rescheduled meeting, like yeah. four I, times. I, I, I see it was cute. How, how many have you done that before? Yeah. Yeah. There was one time where this goes back a number of years. Somebody had some kind of a dinner meeting on the clubs. Yep. And so they couldn't get a quorum. So they said, wait a minute, call this group. Yeah. No. So when a group got through with the dinner meeting, <laughs> okay, most well, of them came to town meeting, got the quorum, did what had to be done, and then it was on the That's funny. I can remember that. They were, they were sober. <laughs> Don't make any difference. It yeah. The vote comes out the same way. It anyway. Um, good chat. Okay. Very good. Okay, very good. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you very much. It's good to meet you. Okay, Ashley. It's been fun, Ashley. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Uh, I'm impressed, Ashley. I can add another day of experience to my resume now. Really. <laughs> no, this counts double, at least. <laughs> I have uh, one invoice that I like to get reimbursed for. When I went to that storm, that MS4 storm water class it cost seventy-five dollars, and I talked to the treasurer, and they didn't get a receipt for the uh, credit card. She would just submit the uh, original request for invoice, and you can get paid from that. Wait a minute, was that pre-approved? No. You went there, and now you want approval. I want to get my money for $75. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion for that. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Good job. That was a very informative class. You know, the way, the way state rams down laws and stuff, how do you keep up with all this stuff if you don't go out there? Yeah. This MS4, this thing is going to be just oh, a this big is, impact. This, 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 this is going to be big all over the place, yeah. and it's complicated. And with a lot of money. A lot of at, money. at first, I thought it was just this little thing. Well, Marlow and the DPW have the stormwater outfall little thing. The planning, and, and, and way beyond that, but the planning board has a piece of it. The Conservation Commission has a piece of it. The selected have a piece. It's like it, it, it touches about six boards in town, yeah. and they're all a bit different. Okay. I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Good.
Anybody have anything else? Yeah, Motion to adjourn? So. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you and thank you, John. John, wake up. See? He's up. Adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Wow.